Hey, what's up, everyone? I am Tenyan. I'm here with my brother, Dan, and we're introducing a new series, the Halloween Horror Fest, where we're going to be talking about horror films and giving horror film reviews throughout the season. And we wanted to start off this series by actually talking about a beloved, pretty bizarre, campy cult classic, Killer Clowns from Outer Space from 1980. 88. This film was directed by the Chiodo brothers, and they are primarily known as special effects wizards and have worked on a lot of pretty cool projects, including Pee Wee's Big Adventure. They were responsible for creating like the effects for the large Mars scene. And they also did like the stop motion segments in Will Farrow's Elf. And so they're quite talented. The basic plot is how it sounds. Killer clowns from outer space. So uh, this comet crash lands into this small town. The aliens appear to be these clown-like entities and they invade the town and start wreaking havoc. This movie fully commits to its like circus theme and aesthetic. My favorite are the acid pies that they throw at you <laughs> that melt your flesh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's very much like early Tim Burton. It has this kind of unique mood about it. There's a, uh, a really consistent atmosphere generated by the fact that, you know, it's a clown world that they create. Like the spaceship is a circus tent. Um, yes. The clowns use, you know, these kind of cartoonish laser guns or popcorn guns. They look like Fisher Price toys, you know? <laughs> they really do. Um, and as expensive as that popcorn was to produce, it looks the part. It's very campy and silly looking. It looks like the kind of toy you could find in, an, in a toy store. The result is something really unique. I mean, it's it's light and fluffy, and the acting is, is intentionally just hammy and terrible. Um and the characters are disposable and there's there's no sense of emotional depth or roundedness to the characters because you're not there for any of that right you're you're there for the sets you're there for the special effects you're there for those you know those clowns and and how amazing and weird and silly but also you know sometimes how creepy they look the clowns are are creepy i mean yeah there are moments when the clowns are just you know wreaking havoc and laughing demonically and it's like whoa like yeah i don't want to mm. you in a dark alley here um for sure you get a range of reactions to the clowns and the range of reactions is really funny to me because like there's no consistency like you would think looking at the clowns mm. that everyone would be what the heck are these things yeah i yeah. mean if they turned up nowadays people would think it's it's some kind of internet stunt right but yeah um yeah. But 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 regardless, it's just like half the fun is just seeing how these these side characters react to the clowns when they turn up yeah. in drugstores, at restaurants, out in the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, and the, the acting is atrocious. It is hilariously awfully bad. Uh, there is a love triangle, and one of the cringy, hilarious things about this love triangle is that the characters are more concerned with like their romantic problems than the actual like crazy killer clowns. Like stopping the story to just like figure out, you know, the tension and the love triangle. And I was like, wait, what are you doing? Yeah, you, you gotta deal with this situation here. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, other than the special effects and the, the clowns themselves. Um, and the things we've already mentioned, I think that another reason to turn up is just like the dialogue. The, the dialogue is is intentionally awful. And so bad. I know at least there's at least a couple of people in this cast that who can't act. So there's the guy who plays Dave. What's his name? John Allen Nelson. John Allen Nelson. And then there's John yeah. Vernon. John Vernon especially was a, a noted character actor. Mm -hmm. um, he turns up in a lot of stuff, especially in the 80s. Oh. Can I just say uh, one thing about the acting? I, I do love the way John Vernon does this the best in this, the, the, the movie because he has the, the best character to work with. But the way that these characters just have these moments where they say things and there's just like, there's, you know, they're just playing on the idea that they're, these characters think they're real and there's supposed to be some conviction behind it, right? 
But like when Mooney, like the cop Mooney, that the butthead, the older guy, oh, when wow, he says yeah. they're they're not going to fool Mooney, that is these are those moments are just so funny to me because there's such a ironic send up of that character. It's like, dude, you are a hopeless dupe. You have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so yeah. it's like it's like it's like the classic moment in like a slasher film where you have this authority figure who thinks that this these are just these kids are playing playing me for a fool. Um, you know, dialed up to the nth degree. But, you know, it's it, this is obviously played for laughs all the way through and played for campiness and silliness. Some of my favorite parts is when the, the actors are just talking their way through these abysmal lines. Yeah. Uh, and I was just laughing out loud when the comet is seeing the sky and you have this, like, you know, this hillbilly character out in his little cabin in the woods. And he's like, people are going to see it and they're going to burgers and fries and talk dogs and tacos we're gonna be rich and he's i'm like what is this uh yeah he's and he, he's about? going to this, he doesn't have any of these things yeah he's going to the, <laughs> the this tent in the middle of uh the stark forest yeah and he's like oh we'll look at a circus tent where's the ticket booth you know and <laughs> yeah. so what makes us like such a b movie is that yeah those things are exaggerated and made awkward intentionally but there's some stuff that also happened on set that were, was not intended like um there's a scene <laughs> where a car goes off the road and it goes down a hill they rented all the vehicles for mm. this film so they in their contract they weren't supposed to damage any of them so that car was intended only to go down a little bit you know mm -hmm. and not as far as it did and and it was uh severely damaged you know i think one other vehicle is damaged these unexpected calamities happening on set that were not intentional but it's part of the fun of what you're reading about the hearing about the backstory of these campy films and what what goes down yeah, and I was thinking about that because it's really obvious that they're staging the crashes, that the crashes aren't, there's actually no collision. You know, you see the car coming up at this reasonable speed. It's clear the car breaks before it makes contact, and then you cut to a close-up of them and the car going, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another thing that is, is utterly hilarious uh, is the characters of the ice cream truck drivers whose whole idea to rent an ice cream truck and sell ice cream is to get laid and get women you know yeah no it's, a, it's the kind of harebrained it's stupid like... thing that you'd only ever see in a movie but again played up to such a degree that it's shouting at you look how stupid this is this is <laughs> this is what we came up with for this script guys this is how little we invested ourselves in the actual brain work of a script because we know that's not why you're here and that's not that's not yeah. why we're here either. So the, the Chiodos clearly had a lot of fun with that movie. There are some scenes that are pretty gruesome, or I mean, they're not too explicit, but they're gruesome enough. Yeah, it's it's light throughout the atmosphere, the mood. It's always light. Yeah. But there's yeah. this there's this sub subliminal element of like something that could just turn darker really quickly, right? Yeah, it it never does. Um, and I think that's why we're looking at a film that got a, a PG thirteen rating. Yeah. If yeah. they if they turn that dial a little bit towards the darker, even just a little bit, it probably would have gotten an R rating. Yeah. Um, but yeah. but it's just it's light and fluffy throughout. They just they don't go there. It's there under the surface. It, you know, you, yeah. You can definitely sense it, but it's it never becomes overt. Yeah. And also the other thing that's very appealing about this movie is it, it leans into like the satirical elements as well. And like particularly with um, the circus theme, which it it uses to kind of poke fun at, I think it's poking fun at consumer culture in a way, because for example, you have this burger joint, kind of like a McDonald's place, a fast foodie place. And of course, McDonald's and Ronald McDonald's. I mean, there's a clown theme there already that you can kind of pull from. So I felt like the film was like kind of poking fun at consumer culture. You know, it's definitely sending up the the uh the elements the recognizable elements of of u.s american popular culture you know consumer culture um and i think the sure. fast food joint is is definitely a, a set piece for that uh, but so is the circus of course the spaceship circus oh of course yeah, yeah yeah it is a film mostly driven by its practical effects and effects and showcasing those um more than anything else I think that's key. I mean, the Chiodo brothers wanted to make a movie 
that showcased the effects that they really get into and that they have fun with. I mean, I think that this is one of the, one of the things that's most enjoyable about the film for me, at least, is that I I feel like this is a film tailor made for you know the the guys who who definitely remember their childhoods and like to tinker with film film uh, tinker with things. Were artsy kids, uh, you know, would would go out back with with a camera and their dinosaur toys. Like I remember, we used to do that. We would take some you know, some plastic dinosaur toys, we would have a camera. If you set the tight the the dinosaurs up in the tall grass and shoot them at just the right angle, it kind of looks semi-convincing. Um and so the germ I feel like the germ for this film is is stuff that these these guys were doing together as brothers when they were kids. Yeah, I mean I I, I think a lot about, you know, Sam Raimi's early films when I when I watched this film. And I was thinking in particular about Army of Darkness and uh, Greg Nicotero and the other special effects guys, they were like, you know what this film needs is like a, a horrible, heinous hag. And that wasn't quite the term, but it was it was some, you know, delightfully alliterative concept. So Sam Raimi was like, ah, I don't know, you know, man. <laughs> and Greg Nicotero was like, let's just build it. So they do that. They, you know, they build this costume and they decide to like they're, they're going to put a guy in it. and He's going to be standing really still as if it's just a model. And then he jumps out when Sam Raimi's coming by and Sam Raimi's like, oh, that's terrifying. That's in my movie. <laughs> and it's like, if, yeah. you, if you've seen the movie in the Army of Darkness, the heinous horror hag in question, I mean, she looks great and she is scary, but she also looks kind of silly and funny and it's clearly a prosthetic thing. It doesn't, you know, it's not trying to, to be, you know, realistic in any kind of, you know, pronounced or meaningful way. It's just trying to look cool. Yeah, uh, and it's trying to look hammy and, uh, and kitschy. Yeah, um, so that that kind of like special effects work that kind of plays on the fact that what you're dealing with is a kind of fakery has a unique pleasure to it because you can yeah. see the work that went into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also I think that's part of the big appeal of puppets and like the Muppets, for instance. They don't look real. Yeah, but that's why it's so great. They look crafted, and you can see their constructedness, and that becomes part of the experience. It holds up as a as a fun, you know, B movie. And I guess they're the Chiodo brothers are planning a sequel or a possible TV show. Well, right. they've been they've been planning uh, sequels for decades. Um, yeah. The the films just for one reason or another just haven't haven't ever been made there's still a possibility that one or two could be i suppose they're always working on the the franchise it is a franchise if they never do anything else i mean this is a film like rocky horror picture show or plan nine from outer space or any of those great midnight movies where you know you're going for this unique experience which is the mystery science theater yeah experience right i mean you you go and you're, you're making fun of it you're mocking it but uh but like any campy, like any fan of camp, there's a dimension of honest, sincere love there. You love these films because they are kitschy and you can't get that kitsch any other way. All right. This has been our Halloween Horror Fest movie review. We're going to be bringing you some more horror film reviews soon here. And let us know if you uh, have any suggestions. We'd be open to them. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will look forward to seeing you again soon here.